examples and it's you know that's that's horrible and that doesn't excuse it but i think that there are an abundance more of examples where data is used in the right way and has actually led to incredible advancements of care um, and so i think that it's important to remember that and not let some examples of you know terrible terrible ways of managing data be used to prevent it in the future i think we just learn from that and ensure that everything is in place to make sure that doesn't happen again absolutely so we've mentioned the question of uh, safety of data of the need of more education uh, in in practical terms which measures or actions must be taken today uh, to to make uh, better care and to make e-health a part of uh, a better future for health. What do you think should practically be done? What should the governments and industries, you know, academia, care for to improve? Um, is there anything that comes to your mind first? For me, there's three. So funding. Absolutely, there's funding needed to make all of this a reality and adequate funding. <laughs> um, patient engagement from the start as equal stakeholders so that the patient voice is heard throughout. Uh, patients, caregivers, um, parents, vitally important and not just as a tick box at the end uh, to fulfill criteria. And transparency uh, for all involved. And I think if those three things are there, um, in five years, we should be in a much better position and, and learning all the time, learning from these experiences. This has been a fast forward speed um, of, of learning uh, that this last three months have provided everyone. And I think I, I pray that, you know, out of this very bleak time, only good comes out of it because there, there is tremendous uh, opportunity to learn and grow. Definitely. Levi. What would you like to see happen? Yes, absolutely. I agree that uh, the three points you mentioned of funding, of patient engagement, and of transparency are, are vital to, to continue forward. And I think just perhaps within that, so for example, when it comes to funding, I think it's important for governments to arrange that there's internet for as many people as possible. And that will take a lot of funding. I think also for training, which requires funding, I'd say that you need to train as many people as possible to understand technology and to become more tax savvy. And I think also broader than this, I think it's important for, for, for a type of cultural um, change. So for example, when it comes to governments and legal laws and regulations, I believe that governments should, 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 be, should be more open towards um, e-health. So for example, currently during COVID, um, in the US, um, the government has expanded its reimbursement policies. So pr prior to COVID, if someone has, has required teletherapy via the telephone, there would, there would be no reimbursement. But for our COVID, it's been allowed. And I hope that the government will continue um, providing these options so that we can help as many people as possible in the most effective way. And on this point of reimbursement, uh, we've seen quite a difficulty, uh, especially in for mental health, for example, with a coverage of mental health therapy, of treatments that has been quite unequal to physical health. Uh, and also within the realm of physical health, uh, between very heavy treatment or specific treatment to rare diseases to, um, to reach the need of more uh, specialists for it. Um, there is still a big part to be played uh, by the local governments as well to revise their uh, insurance policy for patients and to give uh, also practitioners a better way uh, to offer care to patients. Is this something that um, has been an experience of yours to see problems into this reimbursement scheme and to feel the challenge from this level already? Um. So, so I think that when it comes to reimbursements and when it comes to understanding the needs of individuals, because there's a wide, wide variety of needs. And so, for example, when it comes to, um, to rare diseases, Larry knows this, knows this much better than me. Um, governments 
need to need to focus on saying that there's a wide variety and that every person is an individual that needs to be taken care of. And so I think that that's very important. Mm -hmm. Lara, is there anything you would like to add on this? Yeah, sorry, my headphones have died, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Um, I, I think that um, you're right with rare diseases. It's, it's, it's much more personalized. I think, I think there's a long way to go, to be honest. Um, I, I think, I, I don't think it's, it's there at the moment, but I think that um, it's, it's getting there and I think that there's efforts to improve it for sure. So, um, you know, watch this space, I think. And that goes uh, hand in health, uh, hand in hand with health literacy that we've discussed before, not only for patients, but also for practitioners, for uh, GPs that are the first, contact, uh, the first health contact a lot of people have in uh, sometimes smaller cities and sometimes uh, restricted ways. How do we educate not only patients, but also clinicians uh, to know how to approach uh, patients and how to approach new solutions for patients to suggest not only uh, maybe another practitioner that will have a better specialty, but also offer a new content for patients. Is this something that is possible in your opinion? Are uh, general practitioners uh, e-health literate enough? Is there still a long way to go to teach practitioners and the different levels of health? I would say that the, the first and foremost, there has to be training. It's training, training, training. And I think with, with, the, with the right training, um, GPs and other practitioners will be able to gain a lot in becoming more tax savvy. So I think um, that's first and foremost. But I think also it's something that's related earlier. That's what's one of the most important elements when it comes to the healthcare system is collaboration and sharing. And I think with the right collaboration and sharing, we'll be able to help everyone become better in what they do and when it comes to um, e-health to become the e-health experts everyone should be. Absolutely. Lara, is there anything? Yeah, I, I agree. I think, I think also in this period of time, there's been such a kind of feeling of unknowing. So will this end soon? Do I need to transition to e-health? Will I be able to see my patients again soon? And I think if this is now taken on board that, okay, we might not need this as such in the same way we did through COVID, but actually this is a wonderful benefit to offer, then I think people will commit to taking on board extra curriculum in terms of learning and modules, and you'll see more of this kind of virtual setting where people can receive that training, um, if the government could provide that so it wasn't at a cost. All these things will enable that uh, uh, willingness, I think, because I think that becomes, before even the education, this okay, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm willing to care for my patients with e-health long term. And I'm willing to, you know, in the same way you get extra credits for studying in different areas. And, and it's going to be the same with e-health. And I think, I don't think it should be, oh, I can switch on an app and I'm, I'm quite good on social media so I can do this. There's etiquette, there's different cultures, there's language, there's you know, there's a lot of different things and I don't mean language in terms of literature. I mean, you know, the way that you speak to someone on, in a virtual setting and you take a lot for granted where you can touch and feel and examine and that then needs to replace, be replaced by questions and how you articulate things. And we shouldn't assume that that skill is there as a given. In fact, we should assume it's not and just train everybody up as willing and as tech savvy as they seem that they are e-health has not been a norm anywhere and so we need to start from scratch and think about it long term and not just in a crisis setting absolutely and so before we finish this session uh, i would like to ask a general question are you optimistic about the future of e-health uh, do you see many people many practitioners sticking to it once COVID uh, is under management. Is there going to be a back, uh, a heavy revert to the old ways of now that we don't need to have access to Zoom meetings, to asking extra questions, 
I will just take back my practice as it was. So what do you think and what do you hope for? Levi, do you want I, to I, I'm optimistic. I, I, I'm always optimistic, but I, I think that um, I think that it's an opportunity for, for it to be an addition. And I think if it's seen like that, then it will stay. But I think unless it comes at a systemic level, government level, government backed, government funded, then you'll see some pockets of areas. And, and what I don't want to see is that it's an opportunity for private medicine to just uh, earn more money. Oh, I can now fit in 10 consultations in an evening and instead of one, you know, you know, five in person. And it, it needs to be driven by the right factors and the right needs. And I think that's why if it comes from a government level, then you'll see it, you know, used for good and not profit. Um, so that's my concern long term. So I think I, but I do remain optimistic, you know, because even if there is an element of profit, as long as it, you know, started in the right way and it's it's giving access there are so many people that struggle that need to plan for a hospital appointment for a week before and then have to recover for a week after we're living with conditions that you know i've heard of stories with people who dislocate so easily going over speed bumps and they spend an entire journey you know with with dislocated joints and how wonderful to just take that out of the equation and to be able to sit in the comfort of your own home. So there's so much strength that can come from this. And, and so I do remain optimistic, but I remain cautious because this has to be done correctly. It can't be rushed. It needs to be thought through and it needs to be, we need to get our heads out of the COVID uh, setting and bring ourselves into every day long term and making it sustainable and safe. Excellent. Levi? Absolutely. I'm, I'm also very optimistic and positive about it. I've, what we've seen now during COVID has been like a 90, 95% increase in using um, telemedicine. And I think um, even if um, once COVID is over, people are going to be going back to their regular routine. I think a lot of um, the e-health and telemedicine will remain because we've lot, seen lots of the benefits. And as Lara mentions, when it's telemedicine and e-health when it's worked in combination with the normal face-to-face day-to-day healthcare system. It's something that can be tremendously helpful and can increase the health and well-being of millions around the world in the most efficient manner. So I I am very positive and very optimistic about it. Well, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we are running out of time for this uh, session, but uh, as a reminder to everyone, feel free to continue this very interesting discussion in the LinkedIn group that we've set up uh, and exchange there. Uh, I wanted to to thank both of you, Lara and Levi, for joining today and for the extremely interesting set of inputs that you've given us. So thank you and thank you to everyone who is watching uh, for sitting with us for the session. And we will continue the discussions later on today We will take a lunch break, hopefully, Uh, but we will be back at two o'clock with Marilyn and uh, with opening remarks from Kai Saimonen, the Director of Policy at the European Patient Forum, and then follow up with Maria Maria Gabriel, sorry, the Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education in Youth at the Commission. So stay tuned. You can watch this on our website. And again, Lara Levi, thank you so much for your time. And we look forward to be in touch and to collaborate with both of you soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.